Let's take a look at the nice number theory problem, where you want to show that the product of four consecutive positive integers is never a perfect square. So before we start to solve this problem, we can actually look at some examples of the product of four consecutive positive integers. And we have the following examples, which are 1 times by 2 times by 3 times by 4 is equal to 24, and 2 times by 3 times by 4 and 5 is equal to 120. And similarly, 3 times by 4 times by 5 times by 6 is 360. And then in particular, I want to note that if you look closely, you can figure out that 24 is actually equal to 5 squared minus 1. And 120 is also 11 squared minus 1. So as 360 is 19 squared minus 1. So this gives us a hint that whether we can actually show that the product of four consecutive positive integers is actually one less than a perfect square. So having said that, we'll rephrase the problem by showing that for all n bigger than or equal to 1, n times by n plus 1, n plus 2, and n plus 3 is not a perfect square. So to show that this is true, there are actually two ways. And these two ways uses a common trick, which is to look at the symmetry of this expression. So in the first way, I will actually rewrite this expression by letting x to be equal to 2n plus 3 divided by 2, which is also equal to n plus 3 over 2 which is essentially the middle number that is situated in between n plus 1 and n plus 2. So the reason why we will let this number to be n plus 3 over 2 is that we can now rewrite the whole thing as x minus 3 over 2 times by x minus 1 over 2 and x plus 1 over 2 and x plus 3 over 2. So what we have now is that the terms are more symmetric and furthermore, this enables us to have a nice expression which is we group these two terms together and these two together. So we have that this is x squared minus 9 over 4 times by x squared minus 1 over 4 where the red part is this and the brown one is this. So now let's actually expand out the whole thing. You'll get that this is equal to x to the power of 4 minus 9 over 4 plus 1 over 4, which is 10 over 4 times by x squared, and 9 over 4 times by 1 over 4 is 9 over 16. And then now, recalling that from the given example, the examples motivates us to express this expression as a square minus 1. So I will write plus 16 over 16 minus 1. And then you see that the whole thing is actually x to the power of 4 minus 10 over 4 x squared. And then we'll have plus 25 over 16 minus 1. And now you can note that 25 over 16 is 5 over 4 squared and 10 over 4 is 2 times by 5 over 4. So this problem actually builds on the fact that 9 plus 16 is equal to 25, which is a perfect square, or it's just the 3, 4, 5 Pythagorean triples. So the whole expression becomes x squared minus 5 over 4 squared minus 1. And now we will replace back the x with the n. So the whole thing is n plus 3 over 2, the whole thing squared minus 5 over 4 squared minus 1. And let's expand out this, you get n squared plus 3n plus 9 over 4 minus 5 over 4 squared minus 1. And then obviously this whole thing it just becomes 1. So therefore, we can see that the product of four consecutive positive integers is indeed a perfect square minus 1. So now, to show that it is never a perfect square, it is obviously true that if it is a perfect square, then we will have two perfect squares that is consecutive. But then, obviously, this cannot be true unless it is 0 and 1. But here, from this expression here, we see that it cannot be 0 and 1 because n is a positive integer. Or to put it another way, you can also note that the expression n times by n plus 1, n plus 2, and n plus 3, which is equal to n squared plus 3n plus 1 squared minus 1. This is less than n squared plus 3n plus 1, the whole thing squared. And then you can check that this is also less than n squared plus 3n, the whole thing squared.
This number is situated between two consecutive perfect square. It is obviously true that it is not a perfect square. And so therefore, we have proven that the product of four consecutive positive integers is not a perfect square. So now let's look at the second way that we can look at this problem. So for the second way, what I will do is that I will multiply these two terms together and these two together. And the reason being is that if we group these two together, we will get n squared plus 3n and n squared plus 3n plus 2, where this part is the red part and this part is the brown one. And then now we can actually let u to be equal to n squared plus 3n because both factors have a term that is n squared plus 3n and now we can rewrite this in terms of n so this is equal to u times by u plus 2 and then this gives us u squared plus 2u and this seems very familiar to the fact that this is actually equal to u plus 1 square minus 1 and then replacing the u by n we will get that this is equal to n square plus 3n plus 1 the whole thing square minus 1 and we will get the same result so therefore that's all for the second way and we are done